<sighs> you know, I like to come outside for my seasonal fragrance video, so I thought for a winter fragrance video, I'd come to this very snowy, wintry scene. It's a bit cold though. And although you might think I'm really in a snowy, wintry landscape, that's not the case at all. Let me pull back the curtain a little bit here because it's really a clever special effect. I've come inside because it's not very wintry out there. It's still looking a bit autumnal at the time of filming this video. So I thought we'd film it indoors instead. It's the one day of the year I get to wear this amazing faux knitted sweater t-shirt thing. The day I film my best winter fragrances. This winter, I'm calling it 10 winter fragrances everyone should have for winter. So if you're here for some advice on what to rock this winter, obviously a t-shirt like this, but also these 10 stunning winter fragrances. Stay tuned. Fragrances are the best thing about winter. Forget about family, forget about Christmas, forget about spending time with loved ones, making snowballs, my particular favorite, making yellow snow. And as much as I love making yellow snow, fragrances are my top priority. That's why I've put together a list of 10 stunning winter fragrances everyone should own. So put down that pile of yellow snowballs and join me for some of the best fragrances you can wear in the cold weather. Let's start with one of the most addictive, comforting, compliment-getting fragrances you can wear this winter. Even more addictive than throwing yellow snowballs at little kids. Unlike yellow snowballs, it's also very cheap. Whilst not quite as cheap as yellow snowballs, which is why I love them so much, it's still pretty cheap for a good fragrance. This is Salvatore Ferragamo's Uomo Signature. It has fruit, spices, tonka bean, leather, and coffee. This is primarily a sweet syrupy tonka bean scent. Extremely likeable. There's a bit of fruity freshness up top. Humming away in the background are notes that whilst not front and center, they're adding lots of depth, which is why this fragrance works so well in the colder weather. Bit of attitude from leather, comforting freshly roasted coffee and sweet spices of cinnamon and cardamom. Potential compliments coming your way with this. I'm not going to guarantee any compliments. I'm not going to say 100% compliments or anything like that, but I'd probably say 99.9.999% compliments are going to come your way with this fragrance. The fact that it's only £35 for 100 mil that massive chance of compliments for such a low price, <sighs> no brainer. Tonka bean is a note that's in many fragrances, whether they're summer or winter fragrances, but there's certain fragrances where it dominates, where everything else is revolving around the tonka bean accord. Tonka bean is the heart of the fragrance, just like with the previous one. Also with this one, this is a beauty from Galan. It's L'Homme Ideal extreme. This smells of almond, plum, leather, spices and tobacco. It's got that same syrupy, comforting pancake smell that the previous fragrance had, but this one is not as sweet and it's also darker. The dark fruit of the plum works really well in this. It adds a real depth and richness. It makes the fragrance have a little more gravitas, I would say, whereas Uomo Signature is maybe a little sweeter and a bit more playful. This one perhaps has a bit more weight and maturity to it. Fairly intimate, so not masses of projection. It does smell quite nice if someone comes close to you. It would work really well in close quarters situations. So if you're gonna be near people, if you're going on a date, or if you're gonna be sat near people in a restaurant, or you're gonna be in a crowded situation, people are definitely gonna smell this on you, but it's certainly not a room filling fragrance. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit underwhelmed with this when I first smelled it, but that's only because I'd built a fragrance in my mind after reading the notes, and it wasn't that fragrance. As soon as I see tobacco in notes, my, my brain obviously thinks because I love tobacco so much that the fragrance is gonna revolve around that, that tobacco is gonna be the heart of the fragrance, it's gonna be what's driving the engine, it's gonna be front and center. That's not the case in this, is there? it's supporting it's there in the background but it's certainly not a big tobacco fragrance which is secretly what I wanted it to be but as soon as I got over that and I accepted it for what it was I really started to enjoy it that happens quite a lot sometimes we see the notes of a fragrance we build up what we want it to be in our minds and if it isn't that we can be a little bit disappointed but it's good to stick with those fragrances because like I have with this you can learn to get over what you built in your mind and start to appreciate it for what it is. Winter's always the best time to have a little nip of whiskey, but why only put it into yourself when you can also put it onto yourself and also smell fantastic in the process? CH Men Prevain. Fruits, spices, leather, 
and of course that lovely warming whiskey. Another massive nailed on compliment magnet fragrance. Again, I'm not gonna guarantee that because although 99.9.999% of people are gonna get compliments from this fragrance, you could very well be in that point, point zero one percent of people who don't get a compliment. So if you don't get compliments from this one, then sorry about that. Many people do. If you don't, oh, you're in that small percentage of people who who simply don't get the compliments. But even if you don't get compliments, this is so lively and fun. It's so mass appealing. It's almost like it's been precision engineered to be mass appealing, but without it ever becoming bland or generic, sometimes to appeal to the masses, it has to be dialed down in terms of its creativity. Not so with this fragrance. I find it incredibly satisfying to wear, but also really interesting too. There is a downside to this fragrance. It's got an amazing poppy, opening. It's the best thing about this fragrance. Unfortunately, it is just the opening because this one has quite a steep curve of, of fade and you're going to get an amazing hour or two where it smells great and then it becomes a skin scent. It's not going to disappear completely, but it stops projecting quite as much. Don't fear though, because I have a solution. You could combine this with Perfume Parlor's roll-on version of their copy of this fragrance called Venice Whale and Secrets, only about four quid. Roll that on to your heart's content. The roll-ons don't run down very quickly. Spray this on top. It's going to give you a big bump in performance. It'll last you all day. I'll leave a link to that in the description for you below, and it may even give you that missing 0.001.0% of that missing compliment factor. Here is one of my guiltiest guilty pleasures, but I do not feel guilty about recommending this fragrance for you. It is Gucci Guilty Absolute. GGA, as I like to call it because it sounds so cool, is a glorious concoction of very dry woods, spices, and leather. So dry, in fact, that combined with the leather, people say this one smells a little, a little bit medicinal, a little TCP-like, but oh, it's so good. There's something about it that is just, so addictive. Not addictive in that sweet way, it's a little bit of a bracing, slightly abrasive smell if you're not used to it, but give it a chance, give it a few wearings because I think you might fall in love with this fragrance. It's a real statement making piece, it's going to grab attention, it oozes confidence. Most importantly though, it's got power, it's very potent, it's going to cut through the winter air like a hot knife through butter. If you're not a fan of this fragrance at first, give it a chance, let it dry down and see what sort of attention you get the good kind. If the last fragrance makes people notice you, then this fragrance is going to make people want to eat you. If you like the idea of being eaten, you might want to try Emporio Armani's Stronger With You Intensely. Cannibalism aside, this is one of the best lines when it comes to winter designer fragrances. Toffee, cinnamon, lavender, tonka bean, vanilla and suede. I don't think the brand lists chestnut in this fragrance, but others in the line do have chestnut. But when I smell this, I feel like I, I get some chestnut, I get that lovely chestnuts roasting on an open fire type of vibe. This is mainly about the toffee though, a comforting, addictive, sweet, mouth-watering toffee combined with that syrupy sweetness of the tonka bean. Mm. Offset with some smooth suede leather and zingy pink pepper, this is cosy winter vibes combined with sexy mass appeal. Perfect for Christmas parties, Christmas dates, Christmas yellow snow, Christmas anything. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, celebrate this. Here is an elixir fragrance that gives me massive Christmas wintry vibes. Also give me autumnal vibes because it was in my autumn designer fragrance list, but I'm including it here as well because, yeah, makes me feel wintry and festive. From Boss, this is Boss Bottled Elixir. Frankincense, cool spicy cardamom and sweet smoky woods. I think it's the frankincense in this that just makes me think of the sweet little baby Jesus lying in his little crib in the stable, maybe with some smoke from a, a chimney outside coming in Christmas. Boss took a bit of a brave left turn with this. They moved away from generic, mass appealing designer type smell and have produced something that smells more creative, more interesting and a bit more complex. This is a deep, thick, rich fragrance oozing with gravitas and cozy winter goodness. If you're getting dressed up for a winter event, if you want to smell good, if you want to smell mass appealing, but you also want to smell different and unique, Boss Bottled Elixir ticks all the winter boxes. 
I'm throwing this one in as a bit of a wild card. It's not a deep, dark, rich, sweet smell that you would associate with most winter fragrances. I'm throwing this one in because it's got the power to cut through the cold winter air. If you want something gentlemanly, sophisticated, classical, you might want to try Tom Ford's Beau de Jour. An aromatic fougere for those who are looking for something a little fresher this winter. Notes of lavender, rosemary, oak moss, mint, patchouli and amber. It's good to have a bit of variety in your winter fragrance arsenal, right? And Beau de Jour is an incredibly versatile fragrance. You could easily wear this all year round, no problem. It is one of those fragrances that just suits many different times of year and different occasions. But the power, the strength, the potency of this make it a good winter choice. It's got a very dapper barbershop shaving foam type of smell. It doesn't come much classier than this. It's not really a youthful, playful scent. This is a fragrance for a well put together, gentlemen. If you like to dress stylish, if you've got good fashion game, this fragrance would be the perfect compliment. Beau de Jour is smooth, sexy and timelessly classy. Here's another strong scent. In fact, this one is so beast mode, you've got to be a little bit careful not to overdo it. Dior Sauvage Elixir. Take Beau de Jour, throw in some spice and a bit of the Sauvage powdery freshness and you get this beauty. What I really love about this fragrance is it's got a little bit of that barbershoppy, gentlemanly, classical type of smell, but only in the background. You've got the Sauvage type smell, but it's warmed up and modernized with spices and given a little bit of a tantalizing edge with some licorice. Very different smell to all the other Sauvages. If you're not a fan of Sauvage, please do not dismiss this one. If you want power and class with a sexy modern twist, you're not gonna go far wrong with what is probably still the best elixir fragrance. Right, this next one isn't a designer fragrance, although its price is in line with designer fragrance prices, which is why I'm including it. It does smell quite niche. This is an original creation from Alexandria Fragrances called Hafez's Cigar. A stunning tobacco fragrance with spices, vanilla, and honey. I just find that any of the Alexandria fragrances that have the Hafez name on are superb. Hafez 1984, amazing. Hafez Intense, Hafez Exclusive, and now Hafez's Cigar. Gorgeous. You know I love a good tobacco fragrance. Tobacco is my favorite note, so I've got quite a high bar set for what I think is a good tobacco style fragrance. This one definitely goes beyond that mark. Hani must also really appreciate tobacco in fragrances because he puts his name, Hafez, on all these gorgeous tobacco scents. This is a beauty. If you like sweet tobacco, this is a rich, sweet, spicy, smoky tobacco scent. And I don't think it's listed, but I think there's some of that lovely, delicious, syrupy, pancakey tonka bean in here as well, which just adds an extra addictive quality. Look, if you like sweet tobacco fragrances, if you like Naxos, if you like pure Havan, Hafez 1984, I think you might want to get some Hafez's cigar in your life too. The last fragrance I think ends up at number one on my designer winter fragrance list pretty much every single year because I love it so much. It reminds me of winter, it reminds me of snow, it reminds me of wearing this amazing t-shirt. I look forward to wearing this one every year. I only wear this in winter because it's the perfect time to wear it. From Victor and Rolf, no surprises here, this is Spice Bomb Extreme. Tobacco, spices, vanilla, what more can I say? about this fabulous winter stunner. It's an explosion of sexiness and coziness. It's date nights, it's nights out on the town, it's Christmas shopping, it's yellow snow, everything you could possibly think of for the winter, this is just perfect for. This bottle now is a few years old and I have heard people say that it's had that dreaded reformulation. I can't tell you for definite if that's the case. I haven't smelt a recent bottle of this, but go into a store, find it on the shelves, give it a sniff. If you like it, get it. Enjoy the heck out of it, because if you've not smelt the pre-formulation, if indeed there is a difference in the formulation, then you're none the wiser. And if you enjoy it there in the store, then buy it and enjoy it. And don't not buy it because you think it's not as good as one that came before it. I think it's probably still a great fragrance. Give it a sniff, get this in your winter fragrance lineup. So there we go, my choices for winter fragrances to wear this winter of 2023. If you're looking for some fragrances for the cooler weather, I hope 
this video has been helpful for you. Let me know what your favorite winter fragrances are. Do you think Spice Bomb Extreme deserves to always be at the number one or have the recent formulations maybe knocked it down a peg or two? Let me know. Is there a big difference if you've got both versions, an older one and a newer one? Is there a big enough difference to not buy it anymore? I still think it probably smells great. I hope you like this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do all that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.